I just wanted to share an encounter that I had last night in the presence of the Lord where he brought me before his throne in his holiness, just as an encouragement to you guys. The Lord has told me a number of times now, at least two times, that he wants me to bring people before his throne. That's part of my assignments, part of what he's called me to do. Last night, I was uh, he had me go back and read in my journal over the last year, and there were certain things that he'd spoke to me a number of times, maybe three or four times, and that I had forgotten um, in terms of the fire of God coming and the refiner's fire. And I just saw this theme of what the Lord wants to do. And so I was praying about that and meditating on that. And he brought up a scripture to me and I began to meditate on that scripture. And before I knew it, before I fully perceived it, his presence was on me. It just kept increasing and increasing in a very thick way, uh, even a, a way that's little more abnormal than the when his presence normally comes upon me but it, because it's hard to it's hard to put it into to words but it was a holiness to his presence a very deep holiness and almost in a slightly uncomfortable way there was a slight fear of the lord attached to his presence and so then i begin to wait on the lord just in a quiet place in a in a dark place you know with my eyes closed silent place, just waiting upon the Lord in his presence, just the holiness of God just increased and increased. And before I knew it, uh, it I, I knew that I was before the throne of God, inwardly speaking within the kingdom of heaven is within the king is within his throne is within, right? I didn't see anything. I'm not seeing anything with my natural eyes. I'm not seeing anything even with my spiritual eyes, but I'm perceiving, I'm understanding. There's a form of communication in the spirit where I'm just understanding what is happening, understanding what is going on. And I know that I'm being pulled closer and closer to the King himself, King Jesus, the Father and the Son upon the throne. And I know that as I mean, this, the holiness of God is increasing and it's, and I know the fear of the Lord is increasing and I'm before his throne. And I just, I understand this in the spirit. I understand that there's others around the throne too, just watching me. And it's almost a little bit uncomfortable because I know that I'm my life is laid bare before his throne. I know that he sees all. And so there's this tendency to draw back from that place, you know, because you know that you're, you're, you're as it's as if you're naked before him. Because everything is just laid bare. And so, I, but I didn't want to draw back because I wanted to be before him, right? And so I'm just thinking in my mind, okay, Lord, if there's anything in me that needs to be taken care of that you need to reveal to me, I just want to be laid bare before you. Whatever it is, Lord, if there's anything, you know, that's the way you approach the throne because he sees anything, everything in our lives anyway. If there's any spot or wrinkle, if there's any blemish on me, Lord, show me. Let's take care of it because I want to be before you. And so that was my attitude of approaching the throne. But yet in the fear of the Lord, in, in, in reverence, in holiness, like I am before the great king, what an honor. And his presence, his inward glory, inward presence just increased to almost the place where I'm trembling. Um, and, then, and then I begin to behold him, not seeing anything. But I'm talking about spirit to spirit, my spirit beholding him inwardly, I'm talking about an inward revealing of Christ where you, you just know him. There's just this knowing of what uh, of of his person. There's this understanding that comes from him. I, I just because of the sheer presence and holiness of him and the awe of him, I just begin to weep, you know, and I just begin to say to him inwardly, Lord, like. If people could just see you like this, if people could just understand you like this, right? If Then so many in the world would turn to you. So many in the church would not focus on all these earthly, humanistic, worldly things, but they would, they would want to know you in a greater degree. They would want to pursue you. They would want to come before you. They would want to come here. And I just felt this desire from him of wanting people to come before him, wanting to know him in this way. 
you know, and I just, I just wept just the sheer presence uh, of, uh, and the holiness of him. And I can't even put it into words what it does internally in you. But it's just as that scripture, this is what I felt when I was before him, is 2 Corinthians 3.18, and we all with an unveiled face continually seen as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and are progressively being transformed, transfigured into his image from one degree of glory to another degree of glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That's from the Amplified. But there is this unveiling that the Lord has taken place. I, I know that I I began my journey in 2009 of, of purposely meditating on the scriptures, waiting on the Lord to encounter him, to be before him, to be in his presence. It's been a progression, guys. During that time frame, 2009 to 2015, I know there were still veils in my heart, right? There's the self-life, right? If, if anyone has sin in their heart, it can be a veil. Uh, for me, it was a strong self-will, self-life, my want, my desire, my way. I want God to do things in my timing, my way. That's a veil. There's other veils. There's, there's worldliness. There's idols. There's, there's focus on other things. There's, there's veils. Uh, maybe the Lord will reveal to you a certain veil that is keeping you from him. But it's only when those veils, when we come before him in that place and those veils are removed, then we behold his glory, then we're changed. There's a lot of time that I spent in the presence of God, deep presence of God from 2009 to 2016 and, and even, even up to 2019 waiting on the Lord. But there was time, but I did not experience the change that I needed to because the Lord took me through the crucifixion process between 2016 and really 2022, I had a long experience of, of the Lord stripping me and removing the self-life in me and, and removing those veils in me. So now when the veils are removed, it's then when, because if there's the veil and we behold him, we can feel his manifest presence. We can feel him, but we're not changed. That's the issue. We're not changed. We're not transfigured into his image. But when the veils are removed, when we allow him to remove the veils through, the, through means of the cross and the crucified life and follow me, following him as a disciple, it's then as we behold him in his glory that his glory shines back on us as in a mirror transforms us, transfigured us, changes us into his very image. Then it's his nature. It's his character, his life coming forth in us and through us. So that's what the Lord is after. But the Lord desires, I felt this desire when I was before his throne, as I was just beholding him and I just, this inward knowing, you know, of him wanting people to come before him wanting others to experience what I was experiencing right then and there. Him wanting to transform, transfigure people inwardly into the nature and character of Christ, into his very image. And so I just wanted to release this. And I pray that the presence of the Lord would come upon you. I pray that a holy desire to know the Lord to walk with him, to journey with him. This is in the journey, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. It's in the journey of walking with him, of pursuing him, of waiting upon him, of meditating on the scripture, that you come into the presence, that you come into him. So I pray for the spiritual hunger. I pray for the spiritual desire to be released in your heart. I pray for the presence of God to come upon you. I pray for a grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to come upon you, to bring you in to this intimate place with him. No matter how long it takes, no how many, no how, no, even if it's months, even if it's years, no matter how long, that there would be a grace released to pursue him, to come before him inwardly, to have him remove the veils, that you would behold him in his presence, that you would know him inwardly, know the king, receive a revelation of Jesus Christ inwardly, 
uh, that only comes from being in that place before him that you cannot even put into words, that you cannot even explain. My words do not do it justice what happened last night, me before the king. You cannot. It's spirit to spirit. You must experience him for yourself.